Good morning. Um, took kind of a week off last week. Uh, this week, though, um, we're coming back with a big one, Psalm 51. If you are, uh, if you have read the book of Psalms at all, you are very well aware of this psalm. Let's uh, hop right into it here. I've gone ahead and I've copied off the psalm. Uh, I have here the Holman Christian Study Bible. It's called a Prayer for Restoration. And in the, in the uh, introduction to the psalm, part of the text is that this is a psalm of David. When the prophet Nathan came to him after he had gone to Bathsheba, you remember that story, how it is that uh, David um, sent his army away to attack the king of Ammon while the army was away. He was on top of his palace one day, looked out, saw a young woman uh, bathing at a nearby house, called for, happened to be the wife of one of his good friends, one of his 30 personal bodyguards. He slept with her, she became pregnant. Uh, he took Bathsheba into his harem and uh, probably people's first thoughts was, uh, oh, how nice the king is caring for the wife of uh, his friend. Um, then Bathsheba begins to show that she's pregnant. Nobody in Israel is fooled. Everybody understands what it is that's happened. Uh, David thinks he's pulled the wool over everyone's eyes. He had sent uh, her husband to the front of the battle to be killed. And uh, Nathan approaches David, tells him a parable. Uh, David doesn't know it's a parable. David thinks it's a real story of a very poor man who had nothing but a little ewe lamb. And uh, he loved the ewe lamb like it was a daughter. Rich man lived beside him. A uh, friend came to visit the rich man. He didn't want to kill his own animals for food. So he went and he stole the little ewe lamb of his neighbor and uh, killed the lamb, fed his friend. Nathan finishes the story. David is incensed, jumps up on his throne, starts swinging his sword around. He says, bring the man to me. I'll take care of this right now. And Nathan says very simply, David, you are the man. The sword clatters to the floor and, and David says, what have I done? And he realizes that by killing Uriah the Hittite, uh, by taking Uriah's wife, he has sinned. Begin the psalm here. Be gracious to me, God, according to your faithful love, according to your abundant compassion. Blot out my rebellion, completely wash away my guilt, cleanse me from my sin, for I'm conscious of my rebellion. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, I have sinned and done this evil in your sight. So you're right when you pass sentence. You're blameless when you judge. Indeed, I was guilty when I was born. I was sinful when my mother conceived me. We're going to stop there because this is indeed the first section of the psalm. There is no sila in the psalm. There are no uh, interruptions to what David is saying. But we notice here in the first five verses, David focuses on his sin. So let's take a look at the words that he actually uses to describe his sin. He uses the word rebellion. And he repeats that word. Um, it occurs at least twice here. Then he uses the word guilt. And if you'll notice, he comes back 
and he uses the word the word guilt uh, uh, multiple times. He refers to sin. And again, he repeats that several times. And then finally, he uses the word evil. Um, four different words that uh, David uses here uh, to describe his own evil. If we look at this, I have logos. Uh, we're going to right click on the word rebellion and then look up the Hebrew word. It's the word for transgression. Let's just make a note of that. Uh, we need to not do that anymore, don't we? Rebellion is the word transgression. The word guilt, iniquity, guilt, or the punishment of iniquity. He talks about sin, Sin is uh, the generic word for sin. It's actually the word for a sin offering. A uh, little, a little hint here: when the Bible, uh, when the Old Testament talks about a sin offering, the sin is always the sin of uncleanness. The sin offering is to make man clean so he can enter the temple again. And then finally, he uses the word evil. And uh, again, over here, uh, the word evil is, um, we have to kind of scroll down a little bit through all of these different uses of the word to find it. But here it is. It's badness. It's evil. It is willfulness. Uh, it's, it's an ethical reality. So um, David here uses four different words for sin. Um, he, what he's saying is I'm, I'm completely, completely sinful. Uh, he uses just about every word there is in the Old Testament to describe his sin. Now let's look at the next section. That runs from 6 to 12. Surely your desire integrity in the inner self. You teach me wisdom deep within. Purify me with hyssop and I'll be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you've crushed rejoice. Turn your face away from my sins and blot out all my guilt. Create a clean heart within me. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Don't banish me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me by giving me a willing spirit. So here again, just as David um, described his sin in a variety of ways, uh, he describes his restoration in a variety of ways. So we'll look here. He says, purify me. He says, wash me. Uh, let me hear joy and gladness. Turn your face away from my sins. Blot out all my guilt. Create a clean heart for me. And then renew a steadfast spirit within me. Now, 
there are all of those different ways that David says, forgive me. Um, we can look at the, at the, uh, the verbs that are used here. They don't really help us a whole lot because it's, it's pretty standard. The only thing that I wanted uh, to mention here really is the fact that uh, David uses David uses six different ways to say forgive me to God just as his sin is multifaceted forgiveness is going to be multifaceted now before we leave this section I did want to come back here against you, you alone, I have sinned. Um, what is David saying there? Why does David say against you alone have I sinned? He certainly sinned against Bathsheba as well. He sinned against uh, Uriah, who he sent to his death. He sinned indeed against the nation. I don't think what David is saying here is none of these other things, none of these other people matter. What he is saying is that my sin, first and foremost, is a sin against God. Um, instead of you and you alone, I wonder if maybe even a better translation might be against you primarily. I've sinned. Now, the reality is, when David writes this psalm, what he does is he recognizes before the nation his sin. He identifies when this took place, and he opens his heart in a transparent way to the entire nation and says, before the entire nation, I'm a worm. I'm, I'm a sinner. Look at what I've done. I have sinned against God. Only God can forgive me. Now he begins to say things like, purify me, wash me. Turn your face away from my sins, blot out my guilt. Then he comes down to it. He says, create a clean heart for me. And there, he uses the term that's used in Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is something totally new for David. But then he says, renew a steadfast spirit within me. Bring this back. His sin has placed a barrier between himself and God. He asked God, to renew that steadfast spirit. Then in the last section, David says, I will teach the rebellious your ways, and sinners will return to you. Save me from the guilt of bloodshed, God, God of my salvation. My tongue will sing your righteousness. Open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. You don't want sacrifice or I'd give it. You're not pleased with the burnt offering. The sacrifice pleasing to God is a broken spirit. You will not despise a broken heart and a humbled heart. In your good pleasure, cause Zion to prosper. Build the walls of Jerusalem. David is king. His sin has put a barrier between himself and God. That has broken down the walls of Jerusalem. David says, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you'll delight in righteous sacrifices, whole burnt offerings. Then bowls will be offered on your altar. David says, I will do this. I will rebuild, uh, or, or you, you will rebuild. You'll forgive me. And afterwards, I'll offer sacrifices. Just some thoughts there on Psalm 51. Uh, we haven't gone too deep there. 
uh, you can go much deeper. Uh, the psalm certainly merits a lot of study. I love the way David uh, bears his heart to the entire nation. Sin is a serious thing. David understood that. Hope you enjoyed the study. Come back with us. We will study again another psalm next week.